Okay, so a quick question. If you had no understanding of how the world worked, and the only way to figure it out was your eyes and mind, how close do you think you'd come to knowing what we know today? This was a challenge which lay before the natural philosophers, who were also known as the pre-Socratics, because they lived before Socrates did. While Socrates was focused on proving that some societal norms were immutable and permanent to humanity, the natural philosophers focused their efforts on the world around them and how it actually functioned. More precisely, they yearned to know what the objects around them were made of and if that changed as time passed. The ideas from the Malaysian philosophers, Thales, Anagemenes and Anagemanda, all came to the conclusion, kind of, that all things came from one basic substance. This brings us to the logical question, that if there's only one substance, how can it change into both a fish and a numpa lumpa? A philosopher from Alea in southern Italy wondered the same thing. His name was Parmenides. He began with the conclusion that something which exists cannot become nothing, in which Parmenides thought it returned to a single base substance. The logical continuation from that is the inverse must also be true. Nothing cannot become something, as the lack of a base substance cannot magically appear, he thought. This was not a new idea by any means, and it had been accepted in Greek society for quite a long time, so he wasn't really breaking the mould with that one. But Parmenides also theorised that while the rest of the world was constantly changing around him, no change was actually occurring in reality, and that nothing ever changed its state. He obviously saw the changes happening to water or fire, but this did not change his mind. Well, essentially, Parmenides expanded on the original principle of nothing cannot become something by saying that nothing could change its state, because how could it? Surely that would mean nothing would become something, and hence a contradiction of logic. This meant that Parmenides did not trust in our senses to give us a true picture of the world and preferred to rely upon logic instead. As he believed logic was the greatest tool humanity has for understanding the world, he is referred to as a rationalist. However, Heraclitus disagreed with Parmenides as much as a philosopher possibly could. Heraclitus from Ephesus, which was an ancient city now in modern day Turkey, believed that the world was in a constant state of change, or as he called it, flux, and is quoted as saying, we cannot step twice into the same river, which clearly contrasts with the view of Parmenides. He continued by saying that we must trust in our human senses to give us a true picture of the world that we live in, justifying it by referencing that the world exists due to opposites which we observe. If we were never sad, we wouldn't be able to appreciate happiness. If we were always full, we would never know hunger. If there was never war, we couldn't appreciate peace. But how does that justify being able to trust in our senses or not? This duality essentially relies upon a chain idea. What Heraclitus meant by that is because we are able to sense both sides, both opposites, which exist, which must exist, our senses must be reliable. Heraclitus argues that without these opposites, the world cannot exist. Heraclitus argues that because we can sense these opposites, we can therefore trust in our senses, because they can sense the thing which is required for the universe to, for the world to exist, that being opposites. Clearly, the two disagreed with each other. How would you go about deciding who was right? A man from Sicily named Empedocles, found a resolution to the debate by sidestepping it entirely. He rejected the assumption that they had both initially made in order to have the argument in the first place. Empedocles rejected the idea of only one base substance. But how, and more importantly why, did Empedocles come to such a conclusion? Well, he reasoned that a drop of water cannot spontaneously become a rabbit or a human, which means Parmenides must have been right when he says that nothing really changes. Hence Heraclitus's idea of everything is always changing couldn't be true. 
the key word being everything. However, Empedocles also agreed with Heraclitus in that we must believe in humanity's ability to perceive nature. But what we see with those senses is that nature is changing. And by taking those two premises, he reasoned that the entire idea of a single substance had to be rejected and proposed everything was made, in fact, from four elements, water, air, earth and fire, without challenging a different assumption, what we perceive with our senses and what is actually happening would be so different that human logic would fail, as the basic premise which ideas build off is reliant on some accuracy of our senses. So Empedocles had to challenge an assumption in the argument in order for a conclusion which had both concepts. But again, this still failed to solve the question of how did this base element or base elements combine together into, say, a bird. Empedocles had the answer to this as well. He argued that two forces acted upon the elements, or as he called them, roots, and named these two forces love and strife. Love acts as a binding agent, whereas strife pulls things apart. Empedocles was the first to discern between substances and forces, which is still believed by modern science, who still separates between elements and reactions. Given the scientific equipment and knowledge we take for granted in the modern day, it can be pretty challenging for us to consider what it would be like to not even have a basic idea of how the world around us works, and why the idea of only one or four elements can sound absurd and following their logic can be very challenging. Initially, when I learned about the debate, I immediately took the side of Heraclitus, as the concept of everything changing and trusting our senses made perfect sense until I realised the flaw in Heraclitus's logic. Because they did not know how the base substance could be transformed, they went ahead and, and assumed that a bird could be made, in fact, from water, which sounds ridiculous to us. However, I can see how I would be willing to believe that if I was completely unaware of science. I think one of the key takeaways from this debate is that we should always try to acknowledge the assumptions we are making in an argument, as they may be stopping us from seeing the correct answer, or something closer to the correct answer. Doing so allowed Empedocles to see some aspects of the world which are still agreed upon by scientists today, more than 2,500 years later. It's also fascinating to me that Heraclitus essentially mirrored the concept of yin and yang from Confucius, and while he was about 30 years older than Heraclitus, they definitely wouldn't have ended up knowing each other. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below, and check out this video I made discussing the tough spot that modern stoicism is in. Other than that, thanks for watching. See you soon.